Well, I mean, you have uh, a new battle happening between, you're going to say, China and the United States. You have Chinese firms that are becoming extremely active in the field of artificial intelligence. You have American firms that have been active in it for decades. Uh, both of them are going after the same markets. Both of them are going after the same profits, essentially. And uh, it's creating a lot of tension, international relations and politics uh, and the economy. And now with very protectionist policy we're seeing in Washington, it was a very aggressive expansionist policy we see in China, that's likely to lead to some major conflict. And of course, it has major implications for citizens, for governments, for Europe. And I think to avoid the dystopic ending, we need to democratize as much as possible access to these resources like artificial intelligence. We have to have a robust domestic industry in Europe that is capable of doing the same. Uh, we have to be able to exert some control over the ownership of the data that we generate and over the resources that are built with that data. I mean, all that requires a very ambitious structural uh, transformation of how we function, but also how citizens are involved in the digital economy, because up until now, most of us have actually been excluded from it. Well, I mean, the difference is that, you know, Google targets very large cities with big budgets, London, New York, Toronto, which have money to spend on optimizing metros, you know, all of the big infrastructures, which, of course, most small cities don't have. Uh, but nonetheless, you know, I think in, in smaller cities, you also have space for creating alternative models. So what I would like to see more of is uh, relatively well-off cities here in, you know, in the north and Tyrol being able to actually experiment with pathways and uh, projects that diverge from those of either China or the United States. So I would expect the small cities to be more creative and to do things that bigger cities just cannot do because they're too big. I think there are alternative pathways where you can actually have a decentralized model of data ownership where data is not treated as an asset class, where it's not treated as a commodity, but where it nonetheless contributes to how cities, municipalities run their planning, run their traffic management, run their water system, run their infrastructure. I think there is a way in which citizens can claim a stake in that data and they can own it to some extent, but they cannot necessarily sell it, right? So what we want to avoid is a scenario where all of a sudden municipalities have to pay extra to actually you know, access the data of their own citizens. That's a scenario I would like to avoid, but nonetheless, I think we can go beyond treating that as private property or pretending that it does not exist, which is the current strategy of Google and Facebook, which just refused the fact that they actually accumulated so much data and the data has value.